Despite 28 hours in Ghost Recon Breakpoint and at least five characters in Wildlands, I can't get these games to click with me. On paper, I should love them. Massive gorgeous worlds with tons of difficulty options, tactical Barbie, and synchronized AI stealth headshots? It is firmly up my alley. But everything feels pointless. Felt pointless, but we'll get to that. I've tried extreme difficulty, no HUD, but at the end of the day, the shooting feels mediocre, the missions are repetitive, and difficulty is only achieved through instantly being killed or removing the ability to run away. Not to mention the drones and mechs and breakpoint. A low time to kill doesn't make a game tactical or hardcore, because regardless of if you die in 10 shots or 1, 10 seconds after you're done bleeding out, you'll be back in the mission in 5 seconds from where you were previously. This doesn't lead to fear or tension, it leads to frustration. But I found the secret to enjoying these games. Wildlands, at least. Breakpoint doesn't have it. And I found this secret in Assassin's Creed Mirage. No, seriously. Assassin's Creed Mirage is one of the most 5 out of 10, 5 out of 10 games I've ever played. It is a massive improvement from the last 9-ish years of Assassin's Creed games, in my opinion. Since it focused on being a stealth game about being an assassin instead of other stuff. It's a game I like playing, but very well may never beat, because I have no interest in the story and its gameplay loop is easy and repetitive. But, they recently added a mode called Full Synchronization. This is a start-to-finish permadeath mode. But Damien the Butter Anvil Orphan 69 Shadow the Hedgehog Wistopolis? That's an open world game with dozens of quests. That's way too long to beat without dying. Then don't die, idiot. No, for real, that's actually my point. Figure out which difficulty involves you dying semi-often and go one below that. It's not about dying and feeling the punishment. It's about using the fear of the punishment to strongly encourage more tactical and in-character behavior. Let me give you an example. In Assassin's Creed Mirage, you gain notoriety when you commit crimes, mainly murder. After the first and second levels of it, civilians will start to point you out to guards. This isn't the biggest deal. Even on the hardest difficulty, one or two guards isn't much to deal with. But after you max it out, Shakira? Shakira? After you max it out, Shakira shows up, and as long as wanted posters stay up and criers are unbribed, she can't remember to forget you featuring Rihanna. They're immune to most range attacks, they have multiple unblockable attacks, they have throwing weapons, and they can hit you in the gap after you hit them if you don't get your timing right. In normal gameplay, if this enemy showed up, I'd just fight it out. If I win, it clears the bounty, and if I lose, I'm still just in the city like I was before. I only stand to gain by fighting, but with full sync on, I pop smoke and run away. I hit lifts, I jump across poles, I hide in water, I'm not picking a fight I don't know I can win. And this not only helps me play with a different part of the game's sandbox, it makes me act more like the character and play the game like it was intended to be played. Back to Ghost Recon. I normally play on the hardest difficulty, but I bumped it down to hard. I tried it with normal, but that was too easy. I found myself making mistakes and not really worrying about it, which destroys the point of the whole thing. But I started the game and I immediately found my thought process to be more deliberate and dare I say, immersive. When you start the game, you start near the top of a mountain with a vehicle, and without fail, every single time I've been here, I get in the truck and I try to drive down the cliff. But not this time. Too risky. I got to my objective, instead of just walking through shooting everyone, I parked my car in a bush, crawled to a hidden position, and spent a minute or two droning out enemy locations. I used sync headshots with my team whenever possible, and when three enemies showed up, I took my time to prepare my shots. I droned the interiors of buildings, I scoped out high positions for snipers. I considered failing stealth to be failing the mission. Let me tell you another story from the early game. I was assigned to defend a rebel broadcast while the cartel sent men to destroy it. I placed myself close to the objective, but it was too close. Enemy showed up on two sides and pincered me. As they swarmed me, two of my ghosts went down and I took a round or two myself. My health was worrisome, so I pulled back behind a building while enemies swarmed the objective. I thought about pushing through to save it, but I couldn't risk going down, so I pulled back, ran up the hill, commandeered a vehicle, and drove away from the cartel's rifle fire, failing the mission. And god damn it was so much more interesting than a mediocre third person gunfight. How about my first near-death experience? I was driving down a windy mountain when I came head first against a cartel supercar. I cut him off, stood to the side, and set up a hasty ambush. I didn't get enough rounds out to stop the car, so I chased him down. After filling his car with bullets, I pulled him out of the smoking car shortly before it exploded. I considered the battle won, so I started to squeeze him for intel. Unfortunately, I got ahead of myself, because while I asked my questions, a PMC showed up on a buggy with a mounted minigun. It lit me up and I went down. Fortunately, you can be revived once per fight and my team took it down. But damn, that was too close for comfort. Let's go to a different direction. Let's look at Halo. Most Halo players are probably aware of Lasso, or Legendary All Skulls On. Skulls are optional modifiers that generally make the game harder, but some are just kinda goofy. But instead of going all out, we need just one. The Iron Skull, no not the Crystal Skull. The Iron Skull, when used solo, restarts the current level whenever you die. And no game fits the idea of being vulnerable in Halo, like Halo 3 ODST. When I took hits from the Covenant, the pained moans and characters' attempts to calm breathing gave me the feeling that he was trying to mentally gather himself for the next push. <laughs> And when I'm worried about them dying too, it really enhances the fantasy of what's happening on my screen. Even little things like the weightiness of crouched movement help the experience feel more grounded than other Halo games. Like before, I didn't go all the way to Legendary. I went with Heroic, and in my city exploration missions especially, I found myself counting targets and preparing my position before engagements. 
brutes got treated like major threats and became priority targets. My first death was to hunters on the second level, and when I got to that part again, I discovered that you can avoid them and just go around to continue the mission. I've played this game for 10 years and never done that. This idea wasn't as drastic in Halo, generally you're trying not to die anyway, but I was definitely more invested in surviving, and it helped me appreciate the world a lot more. Especially because I felt like I was in the shoes of my character. Definitely would recommend. Then I had a completely different idea. Which genre allows for tons of variation in playstyle, tons of preparation before engagements, and could be restarted and taken in a completely different direction every run? Oh my god, modded New Vegas roguelike. I already had an installation of Fallout New Vegas with about 150 mods on it, so it was easy to add one more. Dead is Dead is a mod for Fallout New Vegas that allows for many configurable forms of permadeath. You can choose between 1, 3, 5, 7, or 9 lives when you start a new character. And if that's a bit much for you, you can enable a new life every two levels or upon drinking a special Nuka-Cola drink. If you aren't willing to commit to Iron Man like I have, I still recommend this mod. It's very well designed. Once you die, you get a fun screen with stats about your character, and if you're afraid you'll cheat yourself, the mod has safeguards for that too. If you reload an old save, they won't let you play if you've died, and the only way to load saves from gameplay is to go to the menu, so you can't abuse quick saving and loading. Combine this mod with the alternate start mod that lets you delay the main quest, and you have a recipe for interesting stories and super intense gameplay. Let me run you through a few characters. Luke was the sergeant in the NCR, until one day he pissed off a superior with the wrong kind of connections and found himself wandering away from Shady Sands into the Mojave in search of something. He wasn't known for much, and he certainly wasn't well liked, but he was damn quick and he had eyes like a falcon. He was a master of breathing control and always took his time to make sure he hit his target, even if his trigger finger left something to be desired. He considered himself a bit of a survivalist, and he preferred to sleep under the stars. He arrived at the Mojave outpost and quickly got acquainted with the NCR station there. He killed some ants to clear a road near the outpost to make some money. After that, he talked to a scout named Ghost who asked him to check on a nearby town called Nipton. When he got there, he saw a flag he hadn't seen in a long time, and it was still too soon. The Legion was here. He creeped along the edge of the town, doing his best to get an angle on them. He leveled his sights and took his shots. At least one of the bastards went down and he broke contact. Eventually, he made his way to the other side of the town. He fired some more and he threw every grenade he could. And miraculously, the firing stopped and quiet returned. They were all dead. He looked down the road at the crucified powder gangers and decided that whether they were scum or not, they didn't deserve this fate. He tried to take one of them down, but realized there was no way to do it without killing them. So kill them he did. Clean shots to the head for each. Realizing what kind of a threat the Mojave was dealing with, he realized he had to head north to get in touch with NCR leadership. He couldn't let these atrocities continue. He wandered through the desert, but when he stopped to drink some water, he was snuck up on by rad scorpions. Like with everything else, he took time to deliberate. Because of it, he wasn't fast enough. When the NCR found the bodies in Nipton, Luke's body had already been consumed by the desert. Ivan always considered himself lucky, and one day decided he would head to the Strip and show the world just how lucky he really was. From the very first hand, he was on a hot streak, and from there, the caps just kept climbing. The cards kept flipping, the drinks kept pouring, and the fights kept starting. By the end of the night, he was kicked out of every casino on the Strip. When he awoke in Freeside, all he had on him was a 9mm Browning, a few stim packs, and a key to his room in the Ultralux. But the way he saw it, his luck hadn't run out yet. He sold the stims for a gulp of whiskey and about 17 poker chips. By the time he was politely asked not to gamble at the Atomic Wrangler anymore, he had a few thousand caps to his name, enough to pass the credit check back into Vegas. On his way to the Ultralux, someone sold him a 22. He figured some security inside couldn't hurt, and he finally got inside to catch some sleep and plan his next move. On his way out the door in the morning, he overheard a rancher named Heck Gunderson complaining about his missing son. Apparently he went missing at the casino, and Ivan decided he might be able to play both sides. He agreed to help look for the boy, but figured at this exact moment he knew where Gunderson was, which meant his hotel room would be empty. But if Ivan was truly lucky, he never would have come back to the strip. Gunderson didn't bring one bodyguard. He brought one with him, and left two in the hotel room. His pea shooter was no match for their shotguns, and after just a few blasts, his luck ran out. Jericho was a mercenary from Idaho. He was a bit of a tinkerer as a kid, and when he was 17, he took a laser rifle he fixed up from junk he'd found and started wandering from place to place, eventually finding himself in the Mojave at the age of 24. Seeing the gaps in manpower from the NCR sounded like opportunity to him, so he made his way to Camp McCarran. He talked to a colonel who put him onto a raider calling himself Cook Cook. Oh. I'm a fucking Nazarov. Fuck that, nope. Nope, 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 nope. Yeah, I need to, I need to go around. There's no fucking shot. <laughs> if I go in that door again, I'm fucked. That's too many guns. There's no, 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 no. Uh... Come 
managed to pick off a few fiends and made his way back to McCare. Wait, help me, traitor man. Help me, traitor man. Fiends are bad. You'll fight the fiends, right? Right? Robot? Robot? Ow. Yes! Help. Help. Oh shit! Oh fuck! <laughs> they murdered the salesman guy! Help me, robot! Yes! Get him, robot! Yes! <laughs> I'm glad that's over. Sorry your boss died. That's unfortunate. I'm gonna loot his corpse, okay? Damn. I'm sorry, but I am not at liberty to chat right now. Okay, Hello, well you sir. seem... You don't seem super emotionally uh, distraught. <laughs> 20 gauge. Yeah, I'm not really in a position to fight this, to be honest. This gun's model's all fucked up. Help me, Robo Brain! Yes! Okay, I should heal. Fuck him up! If the robot dies, I'm just gonna run. The cook is dangerously close. Shit, he's taking a lot of hits. Fight him, Robo Brain! Are you dead? Shit. Oh shit. Oh, 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 oh. No. Ah, 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 ah. oh fuck. <laughs> I'm a fireball. <laughs> Holy shit. Yes. Yes. Get him NCR. Get him NCR. Oh shit, wake up! <laughs> Everyone wake up! Please, wait, if I talk to them, they'll wake up. Guys, wake up, 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 wake up! <laughs> oh fuck. Oh, they're all trying to talk to me. I just gotta get, yes, wait, yes, yes! Yes! Yes, fuck you, cook, cook! Yes! Fuck you! Yes! Oh! That's so much more fun than any fucking fight ever could be in normal Fallout. Oh! The satisfaction of that is incredible. It's like a Dark Souls boss. <laughs> As with many forms of media, especially games, the lows define the highs. The feeling of being one shot killed by a death claw or dying to three raiders because you didn't manage your positioning right sticks with you. And it helps to elevate what was in all honesty a very simple fight into a truly memorable experience. With moments of fear, exhilaration, and at the end, catharsis. As of writing this, I also installed another mod. Water for fast travel requires water to fast travel. Some mods use money for it, but I wanted something that was limited yet inexpensive. If the fast travel was really cheap on money, the mod would be pointless, and if it was too expensive, it would greatly slow down the pace of my gameplay. You have to find someone who can sell you the water, or loot it, or steal it, or whatever. And something I really like is that every fast travel weighs at least a pound, depending on what kind of water you use. So stocking up on water and storing it, or giving it to a companion to carry, is extremely useful, and also feels like something someone in this world would do. I bought out a water merchant at one point, and I realized I was carrying an extra 30 pounds of water. I forgot there was a water merchant in this game, and I never would have spoken to them if I didn't have this mod. It also accounts for distance, so if you fast travel from a very short distance, it doesn't cost anything. I cannot recommend these mods any more highly. They have completely transformed my experience of these games. I've never really given permadeath much of a chance in bigger games like this, and the results have been absolutely incredible. I now actively seek out mods for games I like to add it, and I hope to see even more of it added as optional modes for games in the future. I think these modes are super underrated, and seeing that Breakpoint doesn't have a ghost mode is a little heartbreaking to me. Even if you're not that good at games, consider bumping the difficulty down and giving this a shot if a game you love is getting a little stale because you've played it so much. It's like throwing in a spicy ingredient. It can really enhance the final product, even if it comes with a kick. Thank you as always for watching, and if you want to see more, consider looking at my YouTube memberships. Or let me know if I should pursue some other support methods. I've been thinking about making a Patreon, but if nobody wants it, I'll save myself the embarrassment. As always, I appreciate your time, and as I always say, subscribe to my fucking YouTube channel.